Would you bow your heads right now? I am so glad to see you. Father God, thank you so much for everybody that made it today. Lord, we are, we are here humbly before you, a needy people. And Lord, I pray that your blessing would be not only upon us, but upon all those that might be watching the live stream. Lord, I pray for physical touch, emotional touch, um, relational touch, financial touch, whatever they need. But Lord, more than anything else, I pray that they would know Jesus Christ and the hope that we have in our Savior. So right now, Lord, we're going to worship you. I pray that you'd be pleased with it, that it would not just come from our lips, but from our hearts. Lord, that we would raise the rafters, blow the windows out. We want to praise you. Fill us with your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand? Let's sing. Good singing. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Morning, well, it's great to see the church full today. Uh, anybody have praises for the week? Come on. Come on. Amen. We needed it. My garden loves it. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Travis Nipple was in that real bad accident in Haiti. I talked to his dad on uh, Friday. He's doing great. I mean... His dad said it's a total miracle. I mean, he's in a horrible wreck in Haiti. They don't have no trauma, no nothing, you know. And he made it, they got him to Florida and they got him in. It's just one thing after another that never, without an intervention from God, he wouldn't even be here. And he has like hardly anything wrong with him. He said his one ear is a little, hearing's a little off, but other than that, it's, 
He's back like 100%. Well, we thank you so much. Now, if you have your bulletins, there's a couple of announcements that aren't written in your bulletins uh, that I just got information on this morning. First of all, there will be no kids Sunday school class next Sunday. Uh, they will resume two weeks from now. So if somebody's watching on, t or on the uh, live stream, two weeks from now, uh, there will be a children's Sunday school class, okay? I'm sorry? That's the 931, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, that'll be the 931. And uh, let's see. Uh, now, don't forget, we have this... Sunday school class is going on right now at 9.30, same time. Uh, the Doctrines of a Biblical Church. It was really well attended this morning. Uh, we had a great discussion. Uh, I'm loving that class. And if you have not made it for that, man, you need to check it out. It's really good. We even have coffee. So if you would like to come and uh, catch that, it's at 9.30. And we have a study booklets and stuff for you. It's really, really good. So uh, keep that in mind. Now, that being said, we have daily devotions devotionals that are virtual we also have of course the live stream that's going on right now the the daily devotionals and the live stream are available not only on the facebook page for first baptist church but also on the website now if you know of someone or if somebody is watching right now that would like to have uh, maybe they know somebody that ha that would like to have a dvd maybe they don't have a computer if you know of anybody that would like to have a copy of today's worship today please let me know would you please and we'll make sure that they get a copy of that uh, we we deliver those usually Monday or Tuesday so uh, if you know just let me know okay now if you flip that uh, I'm flipping mine over here we have a bunch of prayer and encouragement uh, addresses here man we got a lot of people that are hurting right now uh, you know Dana had an operation this week they're not able to be here uh, been in touch with Bill Edna and Rita there's Barb Butler Bill and Betty Grant uh, Rick and Tammy Care, man, uh, Tom and Judy White, Corky Howard. Listen, if you, if you get a moment this week, uh, this is what the church does. We need to reach out to these folks and let them know that we care about them and that we're praying for them. Okay, so there's the addresses right there. If you got uh, if you got an opportunity, please do that. Please let them know that we love them. Um, also, we need help with the kids, teachers, and nursery workers. You see that little baby girl right there in the picture. We got our own little baby girl. She right back there and uh, she's going to be dedicated in two weeks right uh, and so I'm excited about that so um, please we need some help with that please see uh, Shannon Shannon's the uh, one back there in the uh, what's that color Coral? Okay, Coral. I don't know I just, I'm black and white man that's what I am okay alright one more thing look on the back of your bulletin would you please yours is not highlighted but if you would like, uh, if you have any needs, if you have any prayer requests, if you have any updates to the prayer list, if you need me for anything, okay, would you please fill this little section out, this is a brand new section right here, fill this little section out, tear that off and put it in that offering box. Would you do that? And, and that way, and, and don't forget, give me your name, give me your phone number and stuff like that so I can make sure that I can contact you and we'll try to help you in any way we can, counseling, whatever we need. Um, I certainly want to be able to help you with that, okay? So you have that opportunity to do that. Uh, and I will change the Tribune Democrat. Uh, it says that we don't have any Sunday school right now, but uh, just ignore that from yesterday's paper. I'll have a change this week. So we do have a Sunday school class. Okay. Uh, since the offering box is back there, I think we're ready to go into uh, special music. Yes. Okay. It's at 7.30. It's not one of those studies that if you miss a week, you go, ah, I'm waiting to start the next one. It's, it's not a big deal. So if you can make it on a Thursday night at 7.30 and you're a lady that is interested, come on out. No men allowed. Just women. No, we don't want men. <laughs> Story of my life, you know, except for her. She's the only one. She's, she's the only one. Yeah. It's not as good.
It is all about you, Lord. We thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for the sacrifice that you made for us, your broken body and your shed blood. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity that we have had to worship you through our singing. Right now, Lord, we need, we need your word. We need that wisdom. We need that discernment, Lord. And only you can give us through your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that those that are right here right now would be blessed and know and know even the ones that are watching this on the live stream, I, that they would know that they are in the presence of the Holy Spirit right now, wherever they are, wherever we are right here. Bless the reading of your word. Anoint us with fresh oil this morning, Lord, and help me to share what you have shared with me with them that would touch hearts. Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Kids, you can head down. We got some kiddos. Good, 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 good. Man, that's cool. All right. You got your swords with you? Hold them up, baby. Let's go. Draw your swords. Get them up. Repeat after me. Luke chapter 8. Amen. Charge. Hey, I wanted to tell you, and, uh, and I forgot to mention it in the, uh, in the announcements, wanted to tell you that we have, and this is for folks out there too, uh, we have masks available for you and also hand sanitizer all over the place here just in case. So I want people to feel comfortable. I want them to feel secure. We also, and I didn't announce this either, but if anybody uh, prefers social distancing, uh, we do have space here, but we do have downstairs in the fellowship hall and we live stream down there on a big screen as well. So if anybody is, once again, uh, wanting to, uh, to catch this and just not catch this, that doesn't sound good. No, don't use that catch this. No, if you want to see this, if you are wondering how we're doing here and whether it would be safe to come, uh, I certainly hope that you would feel comfortable doing that. So... That being said, we're going to look at uh, chapter 8 in Luke. I have to tell you in our Bible study on Wednesday night, if you come to our Wednesday night Bible study, um, we have been studying Matthew. And in Matthew, uh, where, where are we at? Uh, Matthew 6, I believe it is. Where's my girls at here? And uh, nobody's raising their hand. We're studying Matthew 6. Jane, wh where are we at in Matthew? Is it 6? Oh, okay. It might be 8. Yeah, okay. Uh, anyway, we're studying, we're studying this account in Matthew. We were talking about it this week, and it was really interesting. We talked a little bit in Sunday school this morning about the fact that uh, each one of the Gospels uh, talks about different events, same events, but... Uh, highlight certain things and in Matthew there were two men who were demon possessed in his account in Luke where we're going to study today only one is mentioned we're going to talk about that and I'll tell you why uh, at least as far as I uh, know uh, we'll, we'll study that so anyway let me ask you this if I were to ask you right now if you think God is powerful enough to do the impossible, would you say yes? Would you raise your hand? You believe. Now, this is your faith. I believe that God can do the impossible, right? Okay, so the majority of you, if not all of you, said, yeah, absolutely, right? Well, we come before him today, and people are watching right now, uh, heavy-hearted. There's a lot of stuff going on. Terry sang a little bit about it, and I love that song. Um <laughs> But sometimes we want to pray and we want God to act on our prayers, right? We want him to heal us. We want him to heal our loved ones. If I asked you right now, and I will, this isn't even in my notes. Let me ask you this. How many of you would love to see your loved ones accept Jesus Christ as their Savior? How many of you? Would you raise your hand? We even got some hooping and hollering over here. Wouldn't it be great? Right? Okay. Now let me ask you this. How many of you would do anything to have your loved ones receive Christ as their Savior? How many of you would do that? Ah. Ah. It's interesting. Uh, listen, uh, that's not, I, I'm not convicting you. 
But let me ask you one more question. How many of you are doing everything you can to win the ones that are closest to you, the ones in your mission field? How many of you are witnessing to them and doing everything you can, living out the faith that you have declared? How many of you are doing that right now? Okay. Uh, do you, now you see what we're talking about. I'm not, we're not playing church here, man. I appreciate your honesty. I do. We know that God can do the impossible. And our desire, my desire too, is to have everybody in my family, my relatives, I want everybody that I know to be in heaven with me when, when, we, uh, when we're called home. That's what I want. Okay? But are we doing everything? Are we counting the cost? Because that's what's going to happen today. So we're in Luke chapter uh, 8. But I want to tell you something. There's Jesus. And he, and he gave eyesight to the blind. And he healed the lame. And he dispelled demons, right? And, and, and those afflicted, he did all those things. But many times, if you're like me, we're like the Gerasenes, the people that lived in Gerasen. And I'm going to share something with you right now that, that will go right along with this, okay? Just sit back, relax, don't fall asleep, okay? A shipwreck, I found this, and this is, Walter Mayer wrote this uh, in Decision Magazine. I got this a while back. A shipwrecked man managed to reach an uninhabited island, there to protect himself from the elements and to safeguard the few possessions he had salvaged, he painstakingly built a little hut from which he constantly and prayerfully scanned the horizon for the approach of a ship. Returning one evening after a search for food, he was terrified to find the hut completely enveloped in flames. Yet, it, by divine mercy, this hard affliction was changed into a mighty advantage. Early the next morning, he awoke to find a ship anchored off the island. <laughs> when the captain stepped ashore, he explained, We saw your smoke signal, and we came. Everything the marooned man owned had to be destroyed before he could be rescued. Isn't that an interesting story? I have no idea if it's true or not, but boy, the point of it is amazing, isn't it? We don't want to surrender anything, right? We don't want to give up anything. I talk to people all the time who would love, who would love to, to know Jesus as Savior, but feel like I don't, I'm not willing to give up. I'm not willing to give up drinking. I'm not willing to do whatever. It's too much. The cost is too much. So we want change. We want a solution. We want the problem solved, right? As long as it doesn't change, watch, as long as it doesn't change us or cost us. And this account right here, I think is going to be really interesting. And it's got, at least I'm praying, and I have been praying that God would speak to your heart and maybe reveal his word to you new and fresh, okay? I'm going to pick this up, Luke chapter 8, starting with verse 26. Now, as I usually do, I'll read a verse or two, and then I want to expound on that just a little bit, okay? We begin at verse 26. They sailed, this is Jesus and the disciples, they sailed to the region of the Gerasenes, and you can see it on the map right there on the right-hand lower corner. You see the Sea of Galilee? All right, figured I'd throw you a visual up there. All right, so which is across the lake from Galilee. Galilee is on the left. Now, when Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. Okay, as I said earlier, Matthew listed two men, but one was more forward and seemed to do all the talking with this. Two of them are not mentioned, just one in Luke's account. Okay, for a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, 
shouting at the top of his voice. He could not scream louder. What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me. <laughs> and now, maybe you're sitting here and you're going, this guy was demon possessed. You mean the demons know Jesus? They know that he's the son of God? Absolutely. The demon knew Jesus' name. Watch this. I'm going to give you a couple of different passages, different accounts here that will tell you and prove that the demons know who Jesus is. And the first one is James chapter 2, verse 19. James says, you believe that there's one God? Are you watching this on the live stream? You believe that there's one God? He says, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. The demons know who Jesus is. They know what he has done. They know what he came to do. They know what he did. They know who he is, but you know, they have no saving faith. They know what he did. They know why he came. They have no saving grace, or saving faith, I should say. They obviously believe that he's the son of God and has authority over them. And it says that more or less in this statement right here. They believe in future judgment. This is Matthew 8, verse 29. They shouted, and this is Matthew's account with the two men. They shouted, what do you want with us, son of God? Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Have you come to right now this divine appointment with Jesus and the demons that filled this man? Have you come to torture us before the appointed time? Because this is going to happen. And you'll see that in Revelation. I'm not going to share it with you today, but that's where we find it. And they believe in a place of future torment. We'll see in verse 31. Okay, now let's continue with verse 29, all right? For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him. And though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Man, when I think about that, you ever been in those dark spots? Have you ever had a divine appointment with Jesus and it's dark where you are? Maybe it's, maybe it's right now. Maybe it's today. Yeah, I'm not saying you're demon possessed. I'm saying we, we just have been overwhelmed with different things in life. We have, when he mentions the chains, man, I, I, I used this example the other day. But Jesus, <laughs> if, I, if I look at you, and, and maybe I shared this with you before. This isn't in my notes, and I hope you don't mind. But I saw a, a pantomime from a youth group. They had a kid who's playing the Jesus role. And, and there's, there's a young girl that's kneeling before Jesus. And they are just fellowshipping like crazy. I'm talking about these chains. Now watch. Because somebody comes up behind this girl and taps her on the shoulder. And they're holding a, a bottle of alcohol. They tap her on the shoulder and show her this. Hey, this looks pretty good. She shakes her head no. She looks back at Jesus. Well, they come up and they're more persistent. Tap her on the shoulder. Come on, come on, it's good. And so she looks at Jesus and she gets up and she reaches for this bottle and that, you might say demon, takes this chain off its shoulders and puts it over her. Well, she does this for a while and then a good looking young fella comes over and, you know, and each time, each time something came along to entice this girl could be a guy, could be you. Something comes along, draws us further and further away from Jesus. I'm coming. Gee, yeah, I love you, Jesus, I do. But man, I, this is important to me. 
And so each time a chain goes around that neck until this gets to the point where this girl is on the floor because these chains weigh her down so much. Think about this demoniac. They try to bind him. This is a different, this is a different illustration because the demons are so strong that it just breaks that trying to control him. See? And then finally... Jesus comes along and chases all, of course, she, she is at Jesus' feet, just like this demon, the, the demon-possessed guy was. She's right at his feet, and Jesus reaches out and takes every chain off this girl's neck and puts it on himself, and then he goes to the cross. Can you picture that? You know, that's what Jesus wants to do for us, okay? And this, this thing, this message is just on so many different levels for me. But you have to understand, Jesus will take that. He knows the darkness that you're in. He knows the demons that you fight. They know who he is, and they recognize him, the power of Jesus' name. They recognize him, amen? They do. All right, so let me keep going. Jesus asked him in verse 30, what is your name? Legion, he replied. Because many demons had gone into him. Now, a Roman legion could have as many as 6,000 men. Now, from the references that I found, there were about 2,000 in this man. Can you imagine? 2,000. And they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them into the abyss. Why would they beg him here, knowing that eventually they were going to be cast into that? Don't know. Don't understand. But anyway, they begged him. A large, this verse 32, a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Think about that. Wrap your head around that for a second. All right? They did everything they could to get this guy under control. They were terrified. They could not go through that region because of this demoniac. He terrified them. He could break chains. He could do all these things. And he ran naked and he lived in the tombs. And they were terrified of him. And they probably tried everything they could to get rid of this threat that they had. They didn't seek Jesus out. He showed up. That's what he does. He came to them, and he came to this demoniac. <laughs> I just think this is so cool. The story I shared with you about the sacrifice of everything that was important to that shipwrecked fellow and the reaction of the Gadarenes speak of two different answers to prayer, right? But the reactions involve different investments. I want you to know that. And I want you to look. I, I want you, man, if Jesus could be here right now, physically, and point to you, and bring to mind, and maybe he's doing that right now, bring to mind what it is that holds you captive. What it is that you would give anything to get rid of. Watch. They feared the demon-possessed fellow, but Jesus taking completely, uh, complete control of the whole situation, that scared them worse. What did Jesus do? The impossible. 
Jesus did what no one else could do. Jesus worked a miracle here. Has he done that in your life? Because I know he did it in mine. He took somebody that was lost. Somebody that had no right, I still have no right to spend eternity with him. You don't know my sins. You don't know my darkness. Jesus does. And I can tell you that it cost me everything. It cost me everything. Because when you make Jesus Lord, everything that you think defines who you are, everything that you possess, everything that you count on, everything that you find as a priority must go behind the cross. It must go behind Jesus. Because now he is Lord. Jesus was Lord right here. In the story, God answered prayer, the shipwrecked man, but it cost him everything for his own salvation. Do you understand that? It cost him everything. Everything that he thought he needed. Everything on that island that he had accumulated and tried to protect at all costs had to be sacrificed in order for him to be saved. That's the way it is for us. As a born-again, surrendered believer, I I'm hoping that you can relate to this. Salvation to me is not only what Christ did for me, but about asking him into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, making him Lord. It's about the cost of giving everything important to me in order that Christ might be my everything, the Lord of my life. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Can you relate to that? You a born again believer? You know what it means to be born again. Maybe you're saved. Maybe you said, Jesus, save me. But just maybe he's not Lord of your life yet because you have not been able to sacrifice everything for him and give him everything. All right, but the message was more about the cost to me so that somebody else might be rescued. They, they tried everything. They tried everything to get this guy under control, this demoniac, nothing worked. Well, here comes Jesus. Here comes Jesus. And, and to ask us to surrender to save ourselves is one thing. All right? And we're willing to do that. But what would it cost to save those th that you love? Everything that was so important. Investing in ourselves to see someone else saved? Huh. That's out of the question. We want people saved. We want God to solve the problem, don't we? But man, spare the pigs, because that's going to cost me something. That's what it's about. That's what this is about. It, this happened to the Gadarenes. It's happened to me. And maybe today it's happening to you. Maybe somebody watching a live stream is struggling with something like this. You want that confidence. You want that hope. And Jesus offers it. But we don't like the cost of it. I can't pay for Jesus going to the cross and dying for me. There's nothing I can add or subtract to what Jesus has done. But he says, I want to be Lord, so give me everything. They wanted to see, listen, they wanted to see the guy healed. They really did. But man, not at the expense of their livestock. <laughs> and I, I think maybe they thought, what else is it going to cost us? Can you imagine if you were tending those pigs and there were 2,000 of them? I don't know what ham goes for right now. But if you're tending pigs and all of them... All of them run down and jump into the, the Sea of Galilee and drown. What's it going to cost you? Oh, they wanted this guy. They wanted this guy under control, man. They wanted him to get this demon out of him. But man, it was going to cost them. It was going to cost them big. And that scared them, right? <laughs> so, so I look at this, and, and it says here, 
that in verse 37, then all the people of the region of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. <laughs> Can you imagine? Hey, this is scary. Anybody, did anybody ever get scared whenever you decided to follow Jesus? Anybody besides me? Because you don't know, man. You, you have no idea. I surrendered my life to Christ in January, and the company I worked for went out of business at the end of March. <laughs> I'm telling you. And then my unemployment ran out. And we had a baby on the way. All these things. Listen, <laughs> I can tell you that God is good to his promise to you. He says, nobody outgives me. And I remember, I remember losing my job. And, and before I lost my job, we find out we're expecting Megan in September. <laughs> and it was, it was terrifying. It was. But I thought, oh, I'll get it covered. I'll find another job. Nope. God says, I, you gave me everything. So now I'm going to test you. And that's what he did. That's what he did. A lot of times, if I look back right now, Knowing how God has blessed me today, man, I would have never, ever worried, no matter how desperate things looked. Man, I would be challenged later on, too. You know, we want change, folks. We do want change in our life. As long as it doesn't change us or cost us, don't we? We're concerned about that. Is this what you're struggling with today? It says that, that because they wanted him to leave them, he got into the boat and left. Can you imagine? They had Jesus right there in their midst. He has worked a, a mighty miracle in their presence, and they're terrified, and they want him to leave. So that's what he did. If I look at the rest of that chapter, or the, the rest of that section right there, the man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. Can you imagine? Have you done that? Have you done that? <laughs> I got to tell you, man, because Jesus works this miracle in us. He takes somebody who is lost and he finds them. He takes somebody that can't see because of the blindness of this life and he gives them sight. I can now see. I see clearly now. He, he does this. He works this miracle. He takes the drug addict and can save him and restore him. He takes people with cancer and he can heal them. He's able to heal them. We discussed this on Wednesday night. <clears throat> Excuse me. That, that you know, I, I want you to know this. God is not obligated to heal us physically. He's not obligated to do that. He does it sometimes, and we praise God for that. But what he is obligated to do is to keep his promise to you that he will forgive your sins and you will spend eternity with him. He is obligated to do that. So we have, a, we have a prayer list that's out there on the shelf right there, and there's a lot of names on it. There's a lot of needs on it. We want God to answer every one of those prayers, but I'll tell you, in a lot of cases, it prolongs the inevitable. What's most important is that those folks lean on Jesus' breast and trust him with their salvation and with their eternity. God will take care of the rest. We can have peace we can have hope. Why didn't he allow this fellow to come with him and the disciples? He had work for him to do. Now, uh, I have delivered you from this. I've worked a miracle in your life. Go tell people about it. Go down to Supers Ford. Tell them about that. Right? Go to Black Lake Valley Elementary. Tell them about that. Go wherever you go, wherever you go, and you tell people. You live for people the miracle that Christ has done in your life. Will you do that? What are you struggling with today? Give it up. It'll cost you everything, but you cannot, nothing that you have will keep you out of the kingdom or will, will, will get you into the kingdom of heaven. Nothing, nothing. It's just stuff right here. 
Are you willing to accept the charges now for somebody else? In order to lead somebody to Christ, will you do anything? Let me pray for you right now. Father, I thank you for uh, this lesson that we have. You do indeed fix the problem. You will. Lord, you are willing. You are willing. And this fellow came to Jesus and landed at his feet. And in spite of all the things that this fellow might have done, Jesus forgave him just like, Lord, you forgave me and how you continue to forgive me. Lord, if somebody's struggling with something right now and they're watching this, I pray, Lord, right now that you would speak to their heart. Speak to their heart, not in my words, but with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray, I, I just pray, I, I beg you, Lord. I beg you, Lord, to cast out the demons of those who are struggling in darkness right now. Lord, I pray that they would surrender everything they have. I ask it once again in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing another song, one more. This one's called I Surrender All. Now listen, listen to me. I want you to stand. If you need prayer, if you are to the point right now where Jesus has a hold of you and you are ready to have the bondage, whatever chains Satan is wrapped around you, if you're ready to get rid of those, I'm going to ask you to do something terrifying, and that's come up here and let me pray with you. So as you're singing this song, let's just sing two verses of this, if you would. If you, I'm, I'm going to be right here. I'm going to be standing right here. If, if God is prompting you to do this, come on and step out of your pew. Let me pray with you. It's not a conviction. Hopefully nobody will look at you and say, well, what's their problem? But that you come up and you surrender. Would you do that? sing it you heard them sing it and you know their hearts you know my heart as well lord i pray i pray right now man this message would just be nailed to our hearts that it would be fastened so tightly that no matter who we see we would see someone who needs you and lord i pray for every heart that we would be willing whatever the cost to lead them to you so that they too can have eternal life through your son Jesus bless us Lord with a good week this week bless our country bless our leaders I pray Lord that, that they would turn us back to you Lord that we would be unafraid 
that you would take away the fear. Lord, take away the hopelessness that we seem to see in the media and all over the place. Take all that junk away from us, Lord. <laughs> but most importantly, Lord, I pray that you will lessen the grip that we have on these things, the things that control us, the bondage that Satan holds us in, whether it's fear or whatever it is. Lord, help us to give that to you. Help us to give that to you and change, transform our lives today. Not just today, but tomorrow and the next day. Bless your people here, watching all your loved ones, Lord. Be with us and grant us a great week. Lord, we ask it all in the massive name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. Have a great week, folks.